Welcome to Bridging the Gap. I'm your host, Darion Henderson. We're continuing to highlight black history this month of February here in Myrtle Beach. We began telling you about the cornerstone of the black community, the black barbershop. This time we're going to shift over to the heart of the black community. Of course, we're talking about some good old soul food. I'm joined here today with Prince Bowens. He's the son of Mrs. Francis Bowens. That's the mastermind behind Mrs. Francis Kitchen that thrived back in the mid 1900s. Along with him, we have Mike Chestnut, better known as Big Mike. He's the owner and creator of Big Mike Soul Food, located right in the heart of Myrtle Beach, that's serving up some good eats, some goodies that we have in front of us here right now. Fellas, thank you so much for joining me here. We really appreciate having both of you here. Uh, we're gonna have a great conversation. We have a lot to talk about. But first, Big Mike, since we're in your spot, you also have some food for us too, right? Oh yeah. Oh, so yeah. What, what do we have in front of us? Well, we got some uh, potato salad, mac and cheese, of course, barbecue ribs, fried chicken, candy yams, collard greens, lima beans, <laughs> turkey wings, <laughs> corn on the cob, fresh corn um, muffins, and some, well, I already said the ribs. Yeah. <laughs> a good variety there of soul food that we uh, is a staple of what we do every day. Uh, like Shirley, Shirley Caesar, beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, all the good stuff. <laughs> there you go, there you go. <laughs> all the good stuff, yes, all sir. the good stuff. Yes, and it looks good. I, one of the first places I came here, we talked about it before, one of the first places I stopped by when I got here to Murder Beach uh, was Big Mike's. So I'm like, I want some soul food. Where am I going to get some soul food? I'm like, am I going to get it on the beach? It's a little bit yep. too close to the beach. Talking about some soul food. Showed up here, and I'm man, I've been coming ever since. So uh, you have something very special here. We're going to talk about that. But I want to begin talking about the past, right? Yep. How we got here. If you don't right. know your past, you really won't have a future. Um, so we want to talk about Mrs. Francis Kitchen. And Prince, that's your mom. Right. Um, and just reading about her story, I know folks who's listening to this, watching this are going to be fascinated by it. You know, back in like the mid 1900s, around the time you were born, uh, you guys were opening up restaurants here in Myrtle Beach. Uh, can you just take us back to then and what went into creating the restaurant? Well, yeah, my mom was a cook on the beach, different family restaurant, uh, families and uh, restaurants and stuff. So she got her experience cooking for the white folks here mm -hmm. in the area. So then she decided her and my dad opened up a little spot on 10th Avenue, which was called uh, Ten Top Alley. Uh, she had a little kitchen there and they had a little jukebox and tables and stuff. And sometimes they served seafood outside with the oyster roast and the chicken bog. But uh, from there, they decided to move to the hill, which was uh, in 1959 and on Dunbar Street, a uh, place called Prince's Place. And uh, she started opening up a restaurant there. She had rooms in the back that we would rent to um, some of the golfers and some of the waiters that were working the area. And that's pretty cool too, when I was reading about that, you know, back in that time. Uh -huh. You know, we talk about different places, Charlie's Place that was over there, you know, where a lot of black talents, the only place they could actually perform, and those sacred places. So we talk about the food places as well, you know, for your parents to have a place and say like, you know what, we're gonna need some staff. Right. So we're gonna provide housing for this staff as well. Um, it just goes to kind of like the mindset that your parents were in too, right? Actually, but not for staff, it was for the local people that work in the area. Oh, cool. Yeah. The golfers, uh, the caddies, and uh, the waiters, and the cooks. It's so everybody. To stay. I mean, you didn't have a place for the black people to stay. Yeah. So the, rooms along the area. Then there was Patio Casino, which served food. There was a little club bamboo. Uh, uh, Fitzgerald Place was called um, Patio uh, Western Pines, Pines, what we called yeah. it back then. So there were a few places in the area that, uh, that served food. Cool, cool, cool. And in uh, 1978, um, that's when word got out. <laughs> I mean, word was already out about the food, but that's when kind of the masses started to hear about the food. Um, and that's when it pretty much kind of changed the trajectory of folks coming out and, and, and checking out your restaurant, right? Right, and 78, during that time, uh, white folks started coming to yeah. eat. And that, uh, that brought the name out and brought people, different people in, so that really uh, exploded. Mm -hmm. Was in 1978, 1980, in mm -hmm. the early 80s. Yeah, Big Bite got a little bit of everything on on this table. <laughs> but but, but what's, 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 what's some of the dishes that folks, when they walked in, they were like, "Listen, got that mac and cheese." <laughs> <laughs> also, the, uh, 
fried chicken. Fried chicken. Yeah. We had the whole breast, you know, with the bones in it. Uh -huh. Fried chicken, uh, fried pork chop. Uh, we had um, some other steak, uh, barbecue ribs, meatloaf. My mom made one of the best meatloafs. Really. Okay. Meatloafs are real good. So, uh, Did she hello. make it a certain way? Well, they had that loaf. I ain't to the recipe. I'm just trying to <laughs> Well, in my cookbook, I have, I have a Okay, cool, study. cool, cool. That's cool, that's cool, that's cool. And you got to love that. And Big Mike, you know, you have humble beginnings as well. Yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. Uh, dishwasher at 12, uh, commercial cook 14. Right. So you, it was almost all already destined. And might I add, you also, you know, for disclosure, uh, city councilman for the city of Burnham Beach as well. So you kind of got your hands in a lot. And what, about 48 years old, you decided to open up this. What went into your mindset to say, hey, you know what? After all of that, I want to open up my own restaurant too. Well, you, you know, I mean, when I was growing up and I used to, um, my mom and dad used to bring me through the hill, I guess you would say. Yeah. And I would see the crowds and stuff over at um, Prince's Place there. And I mean, it. And it always just stuck with me, even yeah. though I went out and washed dishes and got me a job, you know, cooking somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to have my own little place. Mm -hmm. so. What's some of the best dishes that you wanted to cook? Right. Well, I mean, you were in the kitchen. You was like this, like this, and this me. Well, I, I would probably say chicken ball. I'll go okay. back to chicken ball. Yeah. I mean, mac and cheese is good, and I know how to do that. But <laughs> chicken ball is one of my favorite because yeah. it's one of those dishes where you know. You can just about add your own little flavor to it if you want right. to add a little smoked turkey to it or, you know, some uh, smoked neck bones or something to it. You can do it. So. Yeah. And that's like a South Carolina staple, too. I, I had never heard about chicken ball. <laughs> <laughs> never heard about chicken yeah. ball until I got out here and I'm like, okay, what is this? Is oh, it? Yeah. Is it supposed to be a sort of gumbo? Like, I mean, what what are y'all going for? How would you explain chicken ball? Because somebody who listened to this probably like, okay, well, what is it? Well, I mean, it's it's a low country dish, but it's that uh, it's a dish that um, I guess you can say you, know, you can get all your ingredients right there in one in one <laughs> dish. I mean, you're gonna have your chicken, you're gonna have your sausage, you're gonna have your rice, and some people put a little bit of onions in it, a little bit of celery in it. But you know, I just like the basic, just rice, chicken, and sauces. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And when you think about, you know, you started your business back in uh, 2012 is when you started it. Right, right. right. Um, knowing, you know, what you went through when you when you had to start. I mean, can you share kind of maybe some adversities you had to go through to even get this place? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it was challenging. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I can tell you when, wow. Let me, let me tell you the first little story. Okay. Well, when we first um, got this building here, and i never forget this. This is a true story. I went to the bank, went to open my account, had the money in my hand. The lady said, no, you can't open your account like that. You gotta have your EIN number first. I said, well, wait a minute, my accountant told me to do it this way. No, no you gotta do this. And guy came to the door and said, oh, hey, Miss Chestnut, how you doing? I said, I'm doing fine. I was trying to open my account and put some money in the bank so I can open my business. Right. Oh, we can take care of that because it was Mr. Chestnut. No, don't do it because it's Mr. Chestnut. Yeah. Do it because it's Mike. Right. And needless to say, I left that bank, right. and I went to another bank and opened my account, and so here we are today. Because roughly around that time, you were what, on the city council for what, at least twelve years, eleven <laughs> years at that point. Yeah, probably at that point. Yeah, uh, yeah, because that was on yeah 2012. So, yeah. yeah, and that makes a difference, you know, because we hear about that so much within just the creation of pretty much everything, you know, black ownership, right. black home ownership when it comes to redlining and all yep. that type of stuff where you walk into the bank and it's like, oh, no, we don't have it for you. Right. How important it was for you in that moment to say, you know what? I see what you tried to do. Yeah, we're not going to do that. And I'm going to take my cash and take it elsewhere. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it was, you know, it was important to me to to let people know that you just can't treat people like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then um, as I, I was always a kind of person who hey, I try to to win with the information. You know, I always say beat people with the information and, and know what you know what your rights are. Yeah. You know, you, you can't lose. So, um, but I was determined that we were going to open this place and Absolutely. Big Mike Soul Food was going to be alive. And you did, so, man. Yes, sir. And you did. Yes, they got it done. Yeah. Going back um, to when your mom and your parents were opening up, um, you all's restaurant clearly went from multiple locations. Uh, I know you were pretty young at that time, but what what did you see as they? own the restaurant um, around that period of time? My mom, she was, uh, she was special. Um, my dad was, um, had tuberculosis, so he was in the hospital a lot. Yeah. So mom was, uh, she was everything. 
you know, and I look at, but look at what she did, uh, trials and tribulations she went through, and she stuck to it, and um, I just admire her. Yeah. And it went on for a long time, too, when it, it comes did. to having a business, because, you know, as Big Mike knows as well, I mean, the first thing people talk about when you're trying to open a business, well, you know, most fail within the year, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. you hear it all the time, to last for decades, um, that says a lot. Well, we, she opened in, what, 59, and yeah. we ended up closing, I think, around 93, 94, when we had the fire in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, we were out there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Served a lot of people, met a lot of people, yeah. made a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. And you said, Big Mike, we were talking a little bit earlier, folks still come up in here. Oh, yeah. And it's like, hey, I remember, remember that place? Yep. You know, because maybe you don't know the name, you know, but you remember where it was, right? Yep. I, I mean, I have people come in here every, I mean, just about every, every day or every week. Somebody come in here and say, hey, you know, we've been eating soul food on the beach and um, there was a place over in the neighborhood and they can't remember exactly. <laughs> and I go to tell them, oh, it was Prince's Place or My Francis. We used to call it My Francis. Yeah, you know? it had two names. Yeah, yeah. so uh, and, and it comes back to them. That's the place, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, it's amazing how many people still talk about it. So, mm -hmm. And it means a lot because it just says about how much you all meant to the community around that time, right? I mean, how much people thought about, remembered the food, and still remember to this day. Because one right. thing folks don't remember when they right. go somewhere. I remember food. that one place I went to, and that food was bomb. <laughs> 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 and we kept going back. How does that make you feel, you know, knowing and hearing that, um, even though it's still not here in the brick and mortar sense, um, the legacy of what your mom left behind is still here? Oh, that makes you feel real proud of what she did, uh, what she put me through. You know, how she taught me to uh, be a man and uh, respectful. Um, because in 1964, before Murray's High School was integrated, she was one of the mothers that pushed me, in the LACP, to push me to um, be one of the ones to integrate Murray's High School. Wow. So she was a uh, very, very, very dynamic person. It sounds like it's just so amazing and also we was talking about the recipes too because we were talking about the food because recipes are important um and i read an article from back then uh you said you had to go to was it mrs francis art and science university of southern <laughs> cooking <laughs> what did you pass with what was, what was what was what was the gpa <laughs> was it up uh, pretty high full point <laughs> <laughs> I was, able to, I was able to introduce some of my own little recipes and stuff in, into what she had done, you know, kept make it a little, a little stronger. So, yeah, yeah, it was good. And those are pretty hard um, because even moving out here, I'm from Missouri, right. um, so you can't get home for every holiday, right? No. So normally I stick around here for Thanksgiving. And I remember <laughs> even what, two years ago, being on the phone with my mom and my auntie, we were on a, a, a group phone call, and I'm like, listen, now, how do you make this dressing? So, okay, so, so, so I can't use Jiffy, so I have to make it regular. And then I have to get this and that and boil the water and pour some of this to do that. And then I'm like, all oh, the sage and everything. It's a process trying to get all that for one, to get the ingredients itself, but then to get it all together and be like, okay, now I have to put this all together. That's quite, quite, quite something. Big Mike, for you, how, how did you gather your recipes? Actually, I, I learned a lot of my inspiration and, and recipes and stuff from my mom also. My mom was a cook here on the beach for a long time. Uh, she's since gone, but um, I still think about the time, um, you know, Prince talking about meatloaf. That was one of my favorites also, and that was one of the things that my mom used to make for me all the time is meatloaf. Um, but I never forget when I was working at the yard arm years ago, um, I was trying to impress the, uh, the chef, and I was going to cook a prime rib. And I had to call my mom and say, okay, what do I need to do? <laughs> but it worked, though, because yeah. I impressed him. And that's actually how I became, um, started working on the, on the line at the age of 14. Oh. So. Oh. And as I'm pretty sure we all can uh, attain to this, it's even harder learning from black recipes, too, because oh, yeah. there's no measurements. No. no, no. <laughs> I remember going back to the dressing. I'm like, how much sage you supposed to put in there? To taste? I'm like, well. <laughs> Half of it in the, I know who's taste, you know? Yeah. So I'm just going until it tastes like mama's in some way or somehow. It just makes it just so much harder though, yeah. trying to like really get those recipes down. But when you got it, you got it though. You got it, yeah, uh, yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's where the only job trading came in real helpful because you know, you could see what she was doing and kind of guess how much she was putting in, but um, yeah. 
Yeah, had to write some of those things down a lot of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And how, how it's for you too, um, because as someone who enjoys cooking as well, I'm always intrigued by people's ideas and their opinions about my food. How do you feel even when folks are coming in now in Myrtle Beach and, and, and testing out and giving you reviews? What kind of goes through your mind? Well, you know, you, you try to try to get it just right. Yeah. And then you also try to make sure that you're involved with the staff and making sure that they're doing it the way you want it done. <laughs> so when that customer comes back three weeks later, it all tastes the same, you yeah. know. That's, that's important and, and you know, it's, it's challenging at times, but at the same time, we've got it down now. I think we've been doing it long enough to where um, we've been pretty consistent good and get some good reviews about it. That's good. That's oh, good yeah. stuff. I say for what I enjoy. <laughs> so, right. It has definitely my approval, but it also, you had to get a 4.0, honestly, uh, because as we know your uh, parents passed away in like the 80s. Um, so for you to still even have the restaurant even even after that, that says a lot about people coming back, you know, because right. one thing about people in food, if it don't taste like what it was when I came the first yeah, time, right. I'm not coming, coming back. back. Yeah, right. yeah. so right. yeah. Um, even for yourself, you know, knowing that people came back afterwards, I'm pretty sure it has to bring you a little bit of joy, knowing that you you did get a 4.0 and you, and, and, you, and, you, and you really listened and picked up on it too. Yeah, I also have to give the credit to my wife, yeah. her mom, and her sister, Vernell. I mean, those, all of those ladies really uh, taught me about cooking and stuff. So when, when it was my mom, basically, she was the leader, but there was other ladies that were involved in uh, my learning. Absolutely. And we talk about, um, as we're talking about right now, the recipes. Right. And try not to lose the recipes. Oh, yeah. A lot of people um, in my generation, you know, we have a lot uh, conversations and concerns sometimes mm -hmm. of losing recipes because we don't really ask the questions that we need to be asking right. about what does it take making this me being on the phone my mama like so how you make this some folks just go to YouTube you know? <laughs> <laughs> and Lord knows what what with Jamie from 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 Massachusetts yeah, yeah. How, how how you know her grandmother made it and, and how that's different from what it was in Missouri and then also yeah. down south in South Carolina. It's just so different now. So how, I mean, past just passing it down, you know, um, speaking it or being in the kitchen, how do we pass down those recipes nowadays? Well, I think um, I, I'll, I'll give you an example. I mean, me and my son, we, we spent a lot of time cooking in the kitchen. He worked here full time with me. And so, I mean, he knows about what I want and that little to taste thing, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and you got to kind of tweak it a little bit and play with it a little bit. But um, I don't believe in um, putting things in a, I guess you say for everybody to see it. Yeah. Um, I'll come around and say, okay, put a little bit more of this in it or, or I'll put a little bit more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Did you so, know it is about taste? Yeah. yeah. Give me so, a fork so, exactly. I can, so I can come check it out. We were talking about before too, just how I guess the dynamic of cooking is changing yeah. too, you know, Oh man. Fried, fried chicken, they were putting that in grease. <laughs> like, grease yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like the actual, like, like the white grease. If you have to sit and wait till it like, you know, mm -hmm. goes out. Nowadays, folks just getting the air fryer, popping it in there, pressing doo -doo 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 -doo, and then walking off. It just changes the whole dynamic and the and and the love of soul food because we know what goes into soul food is really your hands. It's yes, getting sir. in the nitty-gritty of it, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. What's your thoughts on kind of like the dynamic of of how cooking is changing nowadays. Well, it really, really has from when the time I was uh, in the kitchen. But uh, you gotta merge yeah. the what's, going, what's happening now and what happened in the past. And then you get the best product out of those past, present, future, and you make good product. But um, yeah, you gotta use both of them. The air fryer it makes it so fast, you know. You almost don't need a stove now. <laughs> you got to get air fryer. <laughs> You really know. And it's like yeah, all of it, it's like a little easy bake oven oh, in the yeah. way. <laughs> like, that's just my generation. Come down, I had an easy bake oven back then. Let me go ahead and put it in the yeah. oven again. But the thing is, you're not gonna get that flavor. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and that, that taste crispiness. Fun. I mean, air fried chicken wings are pretty good, but there's oh, nothing yeah. like putting it into some grease and frying it hard and frying it twice. I'm all about that. I'm all about it. Um, so when we talk about, you know, um, restaurants, mm -hmm. you know, food could be one thing to bring folks back. Um, a lot of times it's also about the vibe as well. Yeah. You know, it's about the, 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 the energy, the customer service. Mm -hmm. um, what was kind of the vibe back then? 
in the place. Uh, the music playing was people, you know, a lot of people, we didn't have our phones back then. Yeah. So folk actually talked to one another when they sat and ate dinner. It wasn't on Facebook. How was, how, how was it back then? In the restaurant that we had on uh, Carver Street, we based focus on black history. So we had a lot of artifacts in there about, and pictures and stuff, and they had some old jet magazines and had uh, pictures on the wall about, uh, about different areas. And so it was about, um, we wanted that, that, that type of um, atmosphere in our restaurant. Yeah. So we feel at home, come in, you know, and let's get good vibes from it. Yeah. Got we had a jukebox, we I mean, did have a jukebox in the restaurant. A little jukebox. Time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was like the number one thing they was playing, like James Brown and stuff, or? Uh, there was a lot of stuff back then. I mean, so many good artists back yeah. then, yeah. About like a lot. That's cool, that's cool. And we were talking too, you know, when you think about over there, once again, Charlie's Place. Yeah. And I, I was thinking about even putting this series together. I'm like, fool. Food. We talk so much about Charlie's Place. Charlie's Place, rightfully so, yeah. gets a lot of attention here in the Murder Beach community. But I'm thinking, like, hmm, <laughs> black folk out having some fun. <laughs> we need to eat. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, so where do we go? So yeah. I'm so happy we could find that out. Mike, for you, um, well, I know for you, I mean, do you even have to have a vibe in here? The line be outside long, just, you know, <laughs> well, to go. But what type of vibe do you go for when folks walk in? What, what, what do you want them to walk in and say about your place? I, I just want people to walk in and say that they've eaten some good soul food and they want to come back or go tell somebody else about it. And you, and you hear that a lot, too, because, I mean, sometimes I'll have people come in and say, oh, my friend from um, D.C. told me I had to come in and if I ever got to Myrtle Beach, so, you know. And, and we do have people come in sometimes. They'll play our little jukebox up front, and yeah. I, I've had people get out there and be dancing and singing happy birthday and stuff. And, <laughs> and, and it's amazing, the crowd will get in with it. Mm -hmm. But during the summertime, you can't do that. Because yeah. everybody be like, I want my food. Y'all yeah. leave that dancing and stuff alone. Well, I want my food, so. <laughs> which, is, which is really good, I mean, because it just gets you just into the vibe. And to, I mean, because oh, yeah. that's what soul food is, just having a good time. Yes, sir. As we know, when yes, you sir. eat something, you know, that's good, mm -hmm. especially if you like, no, but, uh, you feel good. Yeah, Thanksgiving oh, yeah. or something, make you do a little good, a little wiggle, <laughs> you know, make you just feel good about all of it, all of it, all of it. And how did you kind of figure out the direction that you wanted to go in? You know, because there's so many directions to go in, right? Yeah. How, yeah. how, how, how did you kind of find your own lane within it all? I think I, you know, so when I first started, I was working at another place and we were doing seafoods and stuff. But I always came back to seeing the crowds over at Prince M restaurant. Yeah. And I said, wait a minute now, there's a, there's a reason why they got a crowd over there. They had good food and it was what people wanted. Yeah. And then like Prince said, I mean, that's where I, I get a lot of white folks in here. Yeah. They come and eat and I said, wait a minute now, you know, Black owned? Yeah. I said, yeah. You in Myrtle Beach? Yeah. I said, yeah. You know, yeah. so, you know, I see this. That's that's all. Yeah. I, I just want somebody to come in and enjoy it and have a yeah. good time. And Well, yeah. maybe it can be a little deceiving, though, because outside, you know, yeah. you, got, you, got the, you got the sign with the, <laughs> with the <Yeah>. circle. <laughs> Talking about it like so You got a funny story about it. Please tell us about it. Please tell us. <laughs> well, <laughs> Well, we first decided to do soul food, and um, you know, he's talking about the sign, and the sign was here when we got here, uh, surfboard, and um, somebody asked, him, "Wait a minute, now, surfboard and soul food don't go together?" <laughs> got with the sign guy, he said, "No, we can make it work. We can put Big Mike soul food on it." But then we started thinking about, it. we said, like, "Soul food," and we're at the beach. No. <laughs> the surfboard goes with the beach, so there we go, surfboard. In the beach. And you made so it we work. got soul food at the beach. Make it work. What goes through your mind when you hear that? <laughs> well, we had a lot of a uh, lot of um, um, lifeguards, yeah. 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 And I, we have a lot a lot of restaurant lifeguards come to the restaurant. Uh -huh. So um, we we don't know the surf thing, you know, okay. surfers and lifeguards and. So I guess it all kind of comes together. It does. But let's be honest, nobody's eating soul food and then going on a surfboard. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway. <laughs> no, no. Maybe, maybe <laughs> after, yeah, like yeah. before, you know, or something. I don't know. You got to search for it first and then come eat. So yeah, cool. it'd be, be tough if you came first now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love that story, so we had to tell you about that. But um, also about soul food as well, you know, we talk about, you know, even at the beach right. and people recommending it. 
Um, as we all know, when it comes to soul food, people are very particular. Mm -hmm. um, so for people to be recommending it to other people and saying, oh, hey, when you go down there, because as we know, this is South Carolina. Yeah. South Carolina, Murder Beach, give me some seafood. You know, mm -hmm. last thing I want oh, yeah. is fried yeah. chicken, and, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. but they still come here and they get recommended by it. What goes through your mind hearing that? You know, that people say, hey, yeah, I come to South Carolina, I also want my seafood, I also want my, you know, buffet, you right. know, with all the crab yeah. legs, but I also want some good soul food too. Well, I think, I think it makes you feel good that, to know that, you know, people, I, I think people in their minds say, well, this is the kind of food that I've grew up on. You know what I'm saying? Comfort food. And yeah. comfort food and, you know, hey, but it's, I've had one guy, he said, no, if you ever talk to my mom, don't tell my mom this, but your food is a whole lot better than my mom's food. I, said, oh, you well, <laughs> so, so, I don't want to start no family feuds or nothing, but yeah. but again, though, you know, like I said, what brought me around the, you know, I, I went to culinary school and I've done the the foo-foo stuff, and mm -hmm. but what brought me back to soul food was seeing the lines and stuff and knowing if, if Miss Francis can do it back in the day, I can do it today. We uh, now we don't have the the, the um, cast iron frying pan on the <laughs> stove no more. We got fryers now, but now they got air fryers. But, yeah. but still, yeah. you you got to put that love and, and and care into your food to make it real. You got to care about what you're doing. I always tell people I'm not going to eat nothing that I wouldn't I wouldn't sell nothing that I wouldn't eat. So I want to make sure it's right from the beginning, mm -hmm. and put your love and your time in it and stuff. That's true soul food, but the food brings back some inner memories, you know, yes. fun memories, some good yes. memories. especially some good food. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, yes sir, <laughs> yeah, yes sir. Yeah. So it, it, it almost kind of, you know, we call this series bridging the gap, but it also kind of bridges the gap with both of you all situations, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, when you talk about people coming here and when they eat it, be like, oh, this reminded me oh, yeah. of your yeah. spot. It just, yeah. it just bridges that gap and, and just keeps it moving forward. So I'm just so happy to have both of you here. Um, last question, you know, we talk about soul food, mm -hmm. you know, food in general, but definitely soul food. How do we keep um, the soul, the soul within soul food? Start with you, Prince. That's gonna be an individual thing. Yeah. Um, um, what you put into your cooking, or what you know about cooking, or where your recipes come from, is what you do with the, with the album that you have to make it taste good. You know, it's gonna be individual. Okay. Big Mike, what you well, think? Well, I, I, you know, I, I agree with what Prince said, but I think also you've gotta, I mean, yeah, technology bring changes, but at the same time, if those changes are gonna take away from the flavor, when you're cooking for the masses, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might just have to take your time and instead of using the air fryer that might cook chicken in five minutes, I don't know, I've never used one, oh. but I'm gonna take Lucky my time you. and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna take my time and cook my breast for yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. I'm gonna cook my wings for about six minutes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm gonna take my time and do them right and oh, make man. sure um, people enjoy it. Um, and, and then they get the good flavor that you want them to have and the good crispiness that you want it to have and you know so because we know soul food takes time yes sir yeah, it yes, takes sir. time oh yeah you if know. you do it right i yeah. know i mean grandma used to have it going while we had church and you know church right. gonna be by eight hours anyway so <laughs> you know <laughs> And we get home, it food still like that. So, you know, so we're just trying to figure it out. Fellas, thank you so much for joining us here on Bridget the Gap. I yes, appreciate sir. it so much. Thank you so much for having us. Man, listen, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. I definitely enjoyed it myself. We're going to have so much more Black History Spotlights right here on WMBF News every Tuesday of February, starting at 5 a.m. on WMBF News Today.